Welcome to The Coaching Podcast with your hosts, Emma Doyle and Simon Blair, coach for success in sport and business. Hey everybody and welcome to The Coaching Podcast. My name's Emma Doyle. I'm here with Fernando, who's only recently come into my life and what a joy and pleasant surprise that has been. He's got quite the background and history in our tennis industry as an absolute leader, a go-getter, a shaker, and I just, I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, Emma, to have you, to have me on uh, your podcast and congratulations on all the things that you are doing for tennis. No, thank you very much for that, you know, because uh, it's important to work together to create a very healthy and positive environment with all the leaders. And of course, I love it. You know, it's like a, which is the most important aspect. You know, it's, I love it because not only because we love the sport, we love the different ways to do it. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And have you been to Australia? Have you traveled to Australia? Yeah, I, I, I went many, many times with different uh, occasions for the Australian conference, with the, for the tournament. Uh, I was working, helping New Zealand and many, many times like a, the National Federation of New Zealand Tennis Federation, and uh, we did some collaboration agreement with uh, Tennis Australia, I'm talking 2004, 2005, and we did work with them uh, together. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm sure we know many people in common. So when you did cross over the border to Australia, did you try the, the spread, the Australian spread you put on your toast? You know, the Vegemite spread? Have you tried it? No, unfortunately, because it was too, too tennis free. <laughs> you know, we were focused to discuss everything. And uh, of course, when I, I, I had my time there, you know, in Melbourne for the tournament, we enjoy a lot of the city, the Australian yeah. hospitality, which is wonderful. Yeah. Well, because you haven't tried Vegemite, you can choose, Fernando, you can choose your worst coaching moment and what were the lessons or... I should say, and your best coaching moment and what were the lessons? What What would you like to start with? I think that the best coaching moment is when you, the first the first moment when someone, uh, or the first moment when they are getting in on tennis, you know, which is from my point of view, it's a very special moment because you like a coach, you know, has to communicate to create the, the first relationship in terms, and that's, that's why I say to every coaches, we have to keep making attraction, you know. Uh, I, I used to say, no, I don't like to use too much fun concept the, because fun, depending on the culture, is different, you know. And that, that's why I say we, we need to attract people. And then when you, when you attract, then you track, which means create traction, you know, your movement. And I think the best, the best moment in, ten, in tennis has to be, from my point of view, when even a kid or adult or a tennis player, you create an environment for that attraction, you know, and they, they can be in love with the sport. And uh, the worst moment is when someone, for any reason, it's left in our sport, you know, for, for sometimes for some specific personal reasons, sometimes because tennis used to be uh, creating a lot of frustration, you know, if the people are not finding the best way to enjoy it and to de develop themselves. But even though I think that we have to work like coaches to create a, a quite good pathway to include everybody, you know, because from my point of view, even we are working like you and myself, we did work a lot of high performance. I used to say uh, high performance, the strawberry of the cake. It's only a small, very small, tiny part of tennis, and the most important is the cake. You no, know? and uh, how we can create a big cake for everyone. You know? mm. Yeah, the foundation. It's so important, isn't it, to have that warm, engaging first experience. Uh, I love that. I, and yes, we want to connect everybody with tennis, lifelong lovers of tennis. So thank you for sharing that. Our second question is the sliding doors question. You know, when I was, uh, you remind me, when I was 24 years, I was national director of Argentina, you know, but to dream to do it, I had 24 years of my life. And I decided mentally to work with myself, to develop myself, you know, to try to be 
national director, tennis national director of my country. I was a normal tennis coach, you know, like a, probably because I come in from one place which was very important in Argentina. My master coach, by the way, was the coach of Guillermo Villas. Guillermo Villas won two times Australian Open, you know, and uh, we belong to one city, which is a sea city, is Mar del Plata, which is uh, in the Atlantic Sea, you know, and uh, uh, this Felipe was my master coach and was the master coach of Villas. Uh, even he is eight years older than me. But anyway, uh, we share, let's say, to have big dreams, you know, and I, from the beginning, I was more focused to be a tennis player, to be a tennis coach to the early ages. And uh, at the year of 24, I decided, okay, I will prepare myself, you know, to be a national tennis director. And I achieved it at the year, at, at, at my year 36. I spent 12 years going to Australia, going to Germany, uh, to France, to England, to the United States, studying the different national programs, the national platforms to create a platform for Argentinian tennis. You know, and uh, I was a turn every every year. I was adjusting my pathway because even you have a dream, you have to take action and about it. You know, and I spent 12 years to achieve what I dream, you know, and uh, that's uh, when it's a turning point. And of course, every, every big, big challenge that I did is changing my life in some way, you know, uh, even, even sometimes uh, not achieving the results that I want, it's achieving results for, to be better in uh, my own process, you know, which was very important for me. Mm, thank you for sharing. And again, the importance there of being agile and adapting along that, that journey before you got that opportunity. I, you know, it's certainly what makes a, a great coach. So thanks for sharing that. Our next question is our biggest question of all on the coaching podcast. I have 500 responses now to this question. Are you ready, Fernando? Mm, I will try. <laughs> In one to a maximum of three words, what do you think makes a great coach? Create big relationships. Create big relationships? Yep. Nice. And how could a coach demonstrate that? Well, I was in Australia. Let me tell you this story. I was in Australia in 94, 1994 for the Australian Open. And I went uh, to a breakfast with a great coach of Stephen Edgar, Tony Picard, you know, uh, which was a top, at uh, those times was a top player. And Picard was a very, very quiet person, very honest, but also, you know, like a soft guy, you know, and uh, we went there to have a breakfast, breakfast with him. And someone is, is normally happy, Someone is asking him, okay, how you are training Stefan Edler, you know, to prepare the matches. And he was, you know, showing with the body language. Well, we, we take breakfast together before the match, you know, and I read my newspaper and with my cup of tea, you know, and Stefan is with me and I say to him, reading my newspaper, Today, we will play against Villander and I keep reading. Remember, he has a very good backhand down the line to pass you and I keep reading. And Stefan said to me, yes, I know. Okay, we are prepared. Which means confidence environment, it means not to talk too much. It means that the player that you can have the ability to create a relationship with the player, that the player can trust you, and you have your own style, let's say, of communication to bring confidence, to be, you know, a very safe environment for the player to take, because he, asked, he said to, to us, I cannot teach how to play to a Stefan Ezra. He's the number one in the world. My main objective is that he can be confident of himself, you know, 
and, uh, and the style to read the newspaper. And uh, he, he did like this, you know? He was like this, you know, I read in the newspaper and commanding and saying to him, remember that if we're gonna play against the other and keep reading, you know, it's like a normal conversation, easy going, very polite, but creating a circle of confidence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, that's my point. My point is sometimes coach, they have to listen more. They have to act more. They have to love more. And they have to create a better way that the players can de develop themselves, you know, supported by us. You know, but the thing is, they are in charge. And when we understand that, that behind the tennis player, we are working with human beings, you create a trust circle. You know what I mean? And then you can manage which kind of words, concept, principle you can put in a conversation. Yeah, so good. Creating big relationships, I love that. And it's not one size fits all, is it? It's the way that you actually have that conversation with your player. It's it's that combination of what's going to work best for your player and that coach's style. It's it's getting that right within the relationship, isn't it? That, that That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that story. I love little stories. Okay. And finally, our last official question on the coaching podcast is where we ask you to ask us a question that sparks Fernando's curiosity. I think one of the key aspects uh, that we need to learn in tennis, and it's related with my questions to you, you know, also, is how we learn to work together respecting the differences. Because even tennis is, uh, and you know about it, you know, Emma, because you travel around and you know a lot about the seven organization which is running tennis on the worldwide basis. But I think we need to create agreements on the coincidences, you know, and rather to look for the differences, you know. And that's a, and my question is how we can work together, creating an environment, a healthy environment for tennis, that everyone is having the same code. What do you think about it? Yeah, I think it's so important, especially in the world right now, because everything is so divisive and everyone's so, I feel like, especially in America, there's such division. And if I understood you correctly, it's about seeking the similarities and seeking out where we can connect and build rapport so that we can innovate for the future. Is that a good summary of sort of your question? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Rather to, to see a hostile environment, let's work together to create the dots which are connecting us, you know, and rather to see the differences, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. let's work since then, let's work in the coincidence, you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. that's how to do it, you know, how to do it. And this is the, I think the challenge, the challenges for all of us. You know? Yeah. So if I may just do an extended interview, if that's okay with you, Fernando, just to really take that point and just run with it a, a little bit more, you know, is that one of the reasons, one of the real deep reasons behind why you've created the Tennis Innovation Week? How did you really come up with this need for this innovation experience for coaches? Thank you, Emma. There are many purposes, no? But because I spent all my life working in behind the scene to develop a film. Since my early ages, I want to create a system for tennis. I did work for many national federations, different countries, wrote many books, always trying to have a very systematic development pathway for tennis, which I used to say many tennis organizations, they bring fish rather to fish to fish. You know what I mean? It's like uh, we need to help people to develop themselves and develop tennis in the right way, rather to, let's say, give tennis rackets, money support, you know, we don't prepare people, from my point of view, like leaders, and we need to bring leaders in the sport, which means we need to learn from other industries, 
And from a point of view, in terms of development of tennis, you know, we are keep repeating the same formulas in the last 40, 50 years. And if you can say, because that's why I started three years ago, it's a little, it's a little before that I started, because in the year 2000, I published one book, which the name of the book is uh, Road Concept 690, which means to develop programs of six to 90 years. We create a highway, you know, that you can have program for everyone. Probably right now, the name of the book has to be 490 because kids are coming for the four, year, four years to 90 years. And you have people from 90 years playing, you know, bets, you know, and that's my point is we are so focused in, 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 in it probably is overrated high performance, which is good for us because we are coming from a high performance. But we are missing the point that tennis is a wonderful sport to develop people because even you are on court, you are alone and you are facing against yourself. You have to develop yourself. That's why I think we miss many, many years without to bring the benefits and values of tennis. That's why in terms of innovation, and let me tell you another story. Let's, let's bring about Winfield. Winfield Mayor. Walter Clapton Winfield was the visionary founder of tennis. He created tennis. But this guy, 1873, we are talking almost 150 years ago, he patented the first game of tennis, which was, he put in the name Sparatiske, which is in Greek, is the ball game, 1873. But the guy in 1873, his invention was to put everything in one box. He didn't invent the racket. He didn't invent the ball. He didn't invent the net. He didn't invent the balls. The invention was to put everything in, a, in one box and create some rules that everyone can play on part with family, friends, relatives. That was his intention. But he realized in the next year, 1874, that the name is very difficult to pronounce. And he changed the pattern for the second one, which was lawn tennis. You know, and we, that's why the visionary spirit of Winfield, we have to bring back, you know, because the guy was thinking like an innovator. Secondly, he was thinking like a businessman, because when he realized it, that the first pattern, the first name is not working, difficult to pronounce, difficult to understand for people, he changed for long tennis. We we're thinking like a businessman. And the third concept, which is important, was 1877 became uh, Wimbledon, which was the first big tournament. And since then, that game became one sport, which means transforming millions of lives. That's why TBD, Innovation Week, is technology, business, and development, which means technology is the innovation process. Business, yes, you have to think like a businessman to maintain on time. And third one, which is important, you have to help to transform millions of lives, which is the development concept. Mm. Uh, and, and also, they have a second purpose, because TBD for Americans is to be defined. And which is not defined, not determined right now, the future of our sport. For my, for my experience, tennis organization, there are no helping right now, clubs, academies, who has to be our sport in the next 10 years. Emma, remember the movie Back to the Future? Mm -hmm. TBD is the same. Let's show to the people who has to be the future to create a pathway to help them to understand how to develop your academy, your tennis program, your club, bring in innovation in many different ways. Because another common mistake, people think that innovation belongs to technology. No, innovation is everything. It can be in human development, can be a business, can be an organization, can be an education, can be how we bring female coaching. You know, it's like, we need to create a pathway where innovation has to be part of our lives, like sport, but systematically. 
no a couple of person talking, you know, back of the core, one, one idea, you know, this, and the second concept, which is very important, like a purpose, is not only to recover the spirit of Wimple, which was an innovator, you know, the second one is to create a platform where innovation has to happen with like any industry. If you go to the technology environment, you go to Silicon Valley, all the companies, they have a ID department, which is an innovation development where you have the, let's say, the crazy guys thinking out of the box, bringing new ideas to challenge the status quo. They start, you know, changing the way that they are, we are doing the things. And we don't have it in tennis systematic. We don't have it. We have almost 500 organizations in tennis. Right now, we have only two of them with the tennis innovation department, which they are Tennis Australia with the tennis innovation department, and also the ATP with the uh, tennis innovation data department, which is more focused on fan engagement, how they create more engagement with people or audience. But anyway, it's let's think that the next 10 years going to the back to the future, no? Movie, uh, everyone, even small academies, they have to put in place one area, one department, one, one day, well, at least, where we are thinking out of the box and learning for others, for industry, learning for ourselves, from you or other ones to bring something new to our sport. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that purpose. And, and if I may just share two things that came up for me, don't worry if you get it wrong. So to our listeners out there, I remember for my Tennis Australia high performance coaching course, we had to write an article about what was going to take over the game in 10 years time. And I spoke about the the inside out backhand in the women's women's tennis was going to dominate the game in 2014 because that was 10 years you know, after I'd written this article and it didn't, it didn't dominate the game, but at least if you, you know, even if you had to write an article yourself about different things within tennis, not just how the game's going to be played, but what does the base look like? Um, I love your analogy of the cake uh, and taking care of the, the foundation of the cake because high performance is just the strawberries on top, isn't it? I love that little analogy from you. The second shout out I want to just mention is, yeah, Fernando, I'm very fortunate he asked me to speak on very much the development piece and uh, my talk was all about creating a culture of curiosity which pretty much summarized what you just said like if we don't actually set time aside curiosity time within our team that's I, I believe paid time like for your employees to get together and see what they can come up with and not it doesn't need to be the crazy people sometimes it's the practical people as well that can that can really ignite curiosity. Yeah, we, we highly recommend that everyone gets along. And in the show notes, we're going to put down uh, exactly how people can register. Very easy to register. It's a very, very small fee. And it's how many speakers, Fernando, have you got? We have uh, actually 86 speakers presenting. It's the biggest conference in terms of quantity of speakers coming out you know, on the, on the conference. And like you say, because you say one, one key aspect, which is very important and related with the purpose, we need to create a culture, a culture, how we develop ourselves like industry, yeah. you know? And that's why we have 85, 86 speakers coming out from different areas. We have guys talking about virtual tennis, guys coming about data, data customer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how you train your parents, how you bring a welcome program, uh, how you uh, develop a better platform, educational platform for your teams. Yeah. You have at least 24 different areas of tennis to be innovative. And I think since the pandemic hit, you know, I was someone that didn't even know what a landing page was in early 2020. And I think it's all about, you know, what you think that, oh, I couldn't do that or that's too hard or, you know, it's breaking down those barriers, isn't it? And saying, hey, what what is possible? Don't tell me no, tell me how. I love that that concept as well. So we're very much looking forward to the conference. Of all your years of experience and, and even that period going back to where you traveled to develop yourself, 
what, what would be your advice to some of the young coaches out there that feel like they're stuck? You know, they're maybe in a club and they're just doing what they've always done and they rock up and it's like a transaction, you know, with their lessons. What maybe top three tips have you got for some coaches out there that feel stuck and want they want to innovate, but it's like they, they don't know how to take that first step? Well, very good, very good question about it. Okay. Uh, I can say, first remember one aspect, which used to say Bill Tillman. Bill Tillman was the champion of the 20s, he's an American champion. He did the one uh, 10 in Grand Slam. And he used to say, and what, by the way, he was number one in the world, but he wrote 20 books. You can imagine Djokovic, Nadal, or Federer writing books about how they beat the others. Amazing what they did in the 20s. And Tillman say, tennis is one sport, which is bringing you from your day of born, to the day of your death, you know, it's like you can pass all your life play tennis, and that's that's uh, the first the first meaning I want to you know like advice given to them to the new young coaches, teach tennis like a bridge to create relationship to develop people. You know, some of them wants to be top players, but some of them. Some of them wants to have friends. Some of them wants to compete with themselves. Some of them wants to belong. To belong is a very important concept in tennis. You need to feel that you belong to the team, to belong to the club, to belong to the academy. Understand that tennis is a process to develop yourself. And that's the, the first, let's say, selling purpose of tennis. You know, that you can play all your life in this sport. Even without to speak the same language. You can go everywhere and you can find in every big hotel tennis, tennis cards. And you can meet someone to play. Even if you're not speaking the same language, you can create a sport language. You know, secondly, which is very important, try to drop water on the plan of the always learning process of your life. Because even you are a tennis coach, you have to develop yourself in many, many different areas and uh, telling you to be better every day for in the day in the everyday process. And the third one, always try to have a mentor, you know, which is more, uh, from my point of view, it's one of the weaknesses of tennis. We need to create a mentor environment. Then you, when you look top guys, let's say, we have Emma, people like you, and we have guys, top guys like Jim Lur, like uh, uh, Jack Gropel, Jolene Devore, many, many persons who, who did a lot for tennis, you know, and of course they are in another age and they are like a big mentors, you know, and they are uh, helping others to understand the pathway. And that's the key. I think if we try to create like a pass the torch, concept and we are bringing the torch for the new generations you know try to develop a mentorship programs for academies and which is more important uh, to develop tennis in terms of the development phases it's like uh, create links with the knowledge and uh, with very respected human beings which can give it, give to you some keywords how to learn how to develop yourself but also re respect always this, the history of tennis. Because if we, if we see the past, mm -hmm. looking for a better future, acting today, this is the way to work, okay? And that's why you are the Australians, you know, right now, you have probably, in terms of how the uh, Australia open, open modernize all the process, you know, probably from my point of view, the most important Grand Slam in terms of modernized ideas, you know, in the last 10, 15 years. Secondly, you have a lot of different kind of champions that you can bring to the past. And also you have right now like, uh, like Bari, but also we need to create a pathway of the future. You know, and we need to think which will be the place in tennis in 10, 15 years? Or, okay, let's work today. That's why I say in TBD, 
This is innovation in action. No innovation like, let's chat about some idea. No, 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 no. Let's create a pathway. Let, give, me, give me one example, which is, a, let's say, a first call talking about TBD for, uh, in your program because nobody knows about it. Okay, I will, I will give uh, something new for all your audience. We want to create tennis like a clean, green sport with means. Let's bring tennis like a green sport. Every national federation, every tennis club, every has to work to protect the environment. Let's change our lights like clean energy lights. Let's don't use plastic water. Let's recycle our tennis ball. Let's, but not today. Let's think in 10, 15 years. But in 10 to 15 years, if we have clean energy, we have we are being a green sport. And you know, Emma, we came from the green surface. We are, green, we are, we are coming from grass. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is one advantage that we can do like a sport. Let's help the clubs to understand how we can create together a better environment for all of us. Okay. Fantastic. I love that. Develop the person, be a constant learner, find a mentor. Mentors are more accessible than ever today and green tennis let's get back to the roots um off air we we spoke about the 16th of october now it is my birthday on the 18th of october i'm just saying very oh, very close to the 16th so it's in the air this this beautiful liberan energy but could you share one of your crazy ideas about the 16th of october for the future of our industry thank you thank you for the opportunity well we were we were thinking the, the last two weeks about because Tennis Innovation Week and Tennis Innovation Conference. We did work on the project for three years, you know, and the concept how to do it. But the last two weeks, I was thinking, oh, let's let's have a day. Let's have a day which is like a worldwide day that everyone can do something different to change a little bit, whatever, in the technology, something that you focus on how we can do it differently, any program that you are doing. And, uh, and we realized that we can create a Tennis Innovation Day, the Worldwide Tennis Innovation Day. And we started research the day where, uh, when Winfield born, which was in England, October 16, you know, and 1833, which was almost 200 years ago. And I say to my team, okay, let's propose to all the speakers first, and then to all the big guys which are coming with us on this idea, if we can create the Tennis Innovation Day next October 16th, and we will announce next week, you know, following the day that our founder, which was Mayor Winfield, was his, his birth, you know, and that's the idea. I love it. I love the concept. Uh, please let us know how we can help and support. And the conference dates, just for our listeners as well, is from... From October 27th to October 3rd. Fantastic. Action packed uh, couple of days, amazing speakers. And, uh, and just, yeah, I mean, just so grateful to people like yourself that think outside of the square, outside of the box, and provide these opportunities for us all to grow and learn. Because the minute that we think we know everything is the minute that we've stopped learning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fernando, for your time, for your energy and your efforts. I, I remember in the during the pandemic, I put on a, a virtual conference, the triad, the coach, the player, and the parent. I think I had uh, 16 speakers, and I was like, I will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I love being a speaker, and I know what it takes to put on a conference. I'm glad I did it. To newfound respect, take my hat off to anyone who does what you're doing. Uh, I just really appreciate you, and everybody, please remember, create big relationships. You heard it here on the coaching podcast, Fernando, who is from Argentina, but living in Mexico right now. And Mexico, Miami. Yes. And Miami. Uh, and we look forward to continuing to innovate always uh, and always be curious and uh, signing off on the coaching podcast. Thanks again, Fernando, for your time. Thank you, Emma. Thank you very much for wonderful and keep working hard for develop our sport. The coaching podcast was brought to you by Emma Doyle and Simon Blair.